Hi, and welcome to Sounding Great. My name is Rick Zanotti. And I'm Harold Muliati. And today we've got a great guest. We have with us an internationally known vocal coach. She has done a ton of work with clients from all over the world. She is currently out of Singapore, and um, her name is Cynthia Tsai. And uh, she'll be with us in a moment. First, we have our intro, a quick message from Lily Wexu, and here we go. Welcome to Sounding Great, a podcast dedicated to you. Your voice, your recordings, your audio. How you present yourself and how people perceive you. Sounding great because you can. You have a great voice and you, you just love performing or talking. You might like to get into voice acting, but you don't know where to start. I wrote an ebook series called Get Clever about voice acting and announcing to help you find your way through the maze. Get clever today. And we're back. And we are back. And Cynthia, such a pleasure to have you on. I, 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 like I, I mentioned earlier, pre-show, I feel like I know you. We've had you've had so many podcasts out there, so many videos, and they're very informative. They're really good videos. And uh, so it's like, well, you're back. You're an old friend now. We know who you are. And uh, and welcome to the show. Uh-huh. Sure. Thank you so much for having me, Rick. No, it's great. And it's funny, I found you by accident. It's I was doing a search for another <laughs> Cynthia. And and when you came up, I went, Cynthia, wait, let's see. And I started listening and I, I told Harold next day, Harold, we have to get her on the show. She's great. Uh, and uh, really, really enjoyed the, the, the work you're doing and, and your approach. It's very different from a lot of vocal coaches. And that's what I found super interesting you know it's probably due to your background things you've done and learned uh but it's a different approach and it's kind of a more holistic approach to to voice a lot of people <laughs> focus that's it that's it just this and and they forget about other things they forget about how you should breathe or or how your body works the cavities blah 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 and that makes a big difference mm-hmm. yes yeah so i was just talking to a client yesterday and she said now I understand why your company is full voice consulting because mm-hmm. uh, the approach is really uh, holistic. So we're not only just looking at the voice, but also what is stopping you from using the voice and so many other things. And, and yeah, you know, that's the whole psychological part of it too. You know, you've got the physiological, the psychological, how it all ties together. And, and you're so right. You were talking in one of your podcasts about how people get nervous. They have to talk in public. All of a sudden, uh oh. Yes. It's one of the worst experiences for most people in life. I remember that. I used to be very, very shy. And getting in public, I was like, uh, this is not fun. I had thick glasses. I I was just nervous. And and then one day I just said, I've got to get over this nervousness. And in my case, I just threw myself at it. I have to do it. So I just started talking publicly, hated it. And then eventually I grew to love it. Now I'm okay. I can get in front of 5,000 people and just talk, no problem. But back then, oh. Yes. <laughs> you know, so when you were talking about how <laughs> you, you, you got into this because you wanted to become more assertive to, to get your voice out. Yes, yes, that's right. So I think we, for the majority of the population, we all have to go through that <laughs> stage of our lives. Mm which is that we were not we were either not confident or we were not assertive for my case so i was not assertive and uh, that led me on a journey of discovering my voice speaking voice and then i realized wow not only that i sounded more powerful but also Mm -hmm. i felt more powerful and that planted a seed for me to uh, help other people and here here i am after many years and and you have the confidence (laughs) yeah. <laughs> did, did, so did I think you feel, not only the you, confidence, yeah. yes. Did you feel you weren't But confident? also uh, the purpose. Okay. Um, I think one of the reasons that I was not assertive was that I was not confident in who I am. Mm. And uh, discovering my own voice helped me to boost my confidence and also helped me to become more centered, more certain about mm. who I am. And even more important that offering who I am to the world in the help in the hope of helping other people. That's great. 
Now, you were born, were you born in Shanghai? Uh, no, I was born in a city near Beijing, Tianjin. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so I studied in Shanghai. You studied in Shanghai. What, so what did you study when, when you were there? You went to college over there? Yes. So in Shanghai, uh, uh, that's where I studied and worked. Uh, I studied, uh, <laughs> so my majors, they had nothing to do with voice. <laughs> so the uh, my bachelor was uh, uh, studying about economics, mm, okay. and uh, my master's was in business, uh, business management. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. they have nothing to do with voice, but they helped me to uh, hold my skills in other areas like business, marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and when you finally got your voice, you were, you had the power to communicate with everybody from your training. <laughs> so I think also it yeah. has to do with years of self improvement as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Rick and I had a question that we were kind of discussing after watching some of your your videos. In one of your videos, you mentioned that sure. you can listen to someone's voice and. It teaches you things about that person's past, about their personality, and things like that. I was joking with with Rick. Yes. Well, she's gonna she's gonna know everything about us now. So, put you on the spot. What would you say about Rick and I from our voices? Uh, okay. So the two of you have developed your voices. Uh, so that's why it's even more challenging to tell. <laughs> And that is also to assure everyone, every listener, that is not like a magic so that I hear you, then I can tell <laughs> because our, our voice like personalities. So it is so complex. And um, many a time that for even for me, I have to listen to a person in so many different situations. So uh, that being said, it's the same for the two of you. So I have to listen. Right. And I guess that ties into the, oh, let's see, have we lost our connection here? I cut off? Um, we will be right back. It looks like we lost Yes, we Cynthia will, for a we moment. will be back in a moment here. When the she internet gets... is a wonderful thing sometimes. Yeah. And this is a live show, so this happens. Yeah. <laughs> we, okay. um, yeah, we're still... Okay, um, let's see. Yes, she oh, froze on her end. I'm just uh, giving her some instructions on on uh, getting back in here. You should never have asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked the deadly question. It killed off the uh, <clears throat> guest connection. the connection right then and there. <laughs> But she does make a good point because if you have a certain amount of voice training or you're used to talking publicly or just in meetings or whatever you do, then to a certain point you can manage your voice, you can manipulate your voice, you can have yourself sound a little different than you would in, and you can make yourself sound different in many situations. Maybe your teaching voice is different from your regular speaking voice, which is different from your... Um, you know, what of a conference voice or, you know, phone conference voice. So there's a lot of different ways that we can sound. And then what about your nervous voice? When there's an emergency, you have to ask, how, how do you act? How do you become? Yeah, and I would say sort of ironically, what happens for a lot of people when they're not practiced in speaking is they, they might go to their nervous voice when they're put on the spot to start speaking. And Cynthia's back. Sorry about that. We just, we lost. Uh, we had a good internet connection. Something happened. Well, uh, what okay. what I was about to say yes. say there is, um, and I, I guess that goes along with kind of your coaching services. You work with people to figure out how they're going to uh, sound in different situations, how they handle different situations with their voice and and their presentation skills, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So um, we were uh, okay. I think the problem is happening again. Looks like we might have lost her again. Uh, Can you hear us? She she can't right now. Yeah, uh, she, mm. she did. did she saw something. She could, or heard something. But uh, as I was saying, you have that. Yeah, people go into that nervous voice when they're put on the spot to start speaking, and one of the biggest kind of uh, 
one of the one of the biggest sort of um just like him right now see you can hear it in Harold yeah I'm going into it right now but one of the biggest <laughs> contradictions like uh, we were talking about with uh, Matt Baker and we were talking about with George Washington the third is one of the big challenges is just getting yourself to sound like your normal voice mm -hmm. when you're speaking anytime <clears throat> And that's tricky because a lot of people want to sound like someone else or something else. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, I am back again. Hi there. <laughs> We've been talking. While you were so gone, we were sure talking. So not sure what happened. And, yeah, it, yes. it could just be connections. Uh, we have a we have good bandwidth here, okay. but it, it's a long distance. Uh, I think. I, it's uh, yes, could be because uh, it was working quite well at my end as well yesterday. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, and we're in Southern California, just so you know. So you know, it's not okay. that far from Sunnyvale. You you go to Sunnyvale quite a bit, right? Yes, yes. Before the pandemic. <laughs> Before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard to travel now. It's not as it's no fun to travel now with masks and everything. Yeah, not, not fun. Yes. But uh, no, you know, we were talking while you were gone, just filling a little bit of space about, you know, we can all to a certain point change the way we sound if we're talking to a person, if we're talking to a group, if we're on a conference call, if we're in a presentation, if we're in front of thousands of people, our voice may change a little bit depending on how we want to present or anything else. So so like you said, you can tell a lot from a person's voice because we telegraph so many different things from our voices. And mm -hmm. how long does it take you to really feel how somebody talks? Okay. So because, you know, as a person, we are multidimensional. And that's why when I'm listening to someone, it's not only the voice, but also their energy level, mm -hmm. uh, the way they use their body language, their overall look as well. Uh, so it's a combination of things that I'm looking and I'm sensing as well. So uh, that's where sometimes, especially face to face, you will be a little bit faster and uh, even for right now online uh, so with all this information that most of the times people are not aware of, those are the things that i sense it can be very fast it can also take quite some time uh, so it really mm -hmm. depends on different individuals because everyone is at different development levels mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense it's actually a, a very fun uh, profession you chose in this case because it does involve so many different things and, and and like you said it also involves the training you've had it, it gives you an ability to talk to almost anybody about anything and that can help with how they react you deal with a lot of business people um, or professionals yes. who want to really learn how to project better and who, mm -hmm. who do you find are your typical clients ah uh. So the typical clients, they are the first group, they are in the uh, C-suites. So they wanted to uh, uh, improve their influence because they have learned so much on how to be a leader. Mm -hmm. They have worked on their leadership skills, but voice uh, is the piece uh, which is missing. So that's the first group. And the second group, they are people who are giving all kinds of uh, presentations. Uh, also meetings. So when they're speaking in meetings, they realize, oh, they are not being heard. Or they said something, someone else said the same things. Uh, the someone else got more impact and they didn't. So uh, uh, when they're speaking in meetings or when they're giving presentations, they realize they have voice issues. Their voice was not bringing out that much impact as they have expected. And when you deal with people, do you deal with many who are already voice professionals that want to better themselves? Uh, they are more uh, aspiring voice actors. Okay. So I have, for example, uh, I have uh, clients who are in the process of thinking about becoming, using their voice um, as, a, as an asset. So then they realize, oh, their voice is not at that level yet. So some of my clients, uh, once they finished the voice training, they started to uh, look for jobs in uh, voiceover. Mm -hmm. But those are part of it, only one part of it. And right. uh, the majority, they're still the business people. Interesting. So, so you really find that a lot of the business people 
feel that need to really improve that ability. And and I would totally agree with you. Having having been in a, in a C-suite position on more than one occasion, you deal with a lot of people. And and I used to tell people, not voice related, but but attitude related. The confidence you have, you know, a lot of people mistake arrogance for confidence is a very big difference. Somebody who's arrogant, nobody really wants to be around. But if you're confident, that also gives a calming quality to the people you work with so that they're not mm-hmm. so... And if your voice can match that confidence, you tend to have a very yes. calming effect on everybody, which makes them more prone to listen to you. Yes, and also that's where we work on the mindset because mm-hmm. arrogance at its core is still that you are not confident. The fear, right? Yes. So yeah. you are putting on this facade. Uh, so that's why that we are working on a voice, uh, and which actually lead to another question. Some of my clients would ask. They said, "What is a confident voice?" So a confident mm-hmm. or a powerful voice is a voice that you have to be centered in yourself, and. That's where we were talking about earlier on that I was learning how to be more centered. Oh, did we lose her? Um, let's see. Yep. yep. Like, oh, are, wait, no, you're there. The, oh, okay, yep, we're back. Good. Yep. <laughs> so, yes. We, so we were talking off, about uh, when we're on the uh, powerful voice. Uh, yes. So on the confident and powerful voice. So a confident and powerful voice you really need to develop the center in yourself, being who you are, being confident in who you are. And uh, it's not that like uh, putting on a facade of confidence. You really have to be confident. Yes. And being centered in who you are. When you come from that place, then your voice will be confident. Your voice will bring this calming effect to other people because you are, having the coming effect in yourself first. So that's why an arrogant voice is not a confident voice. People can feel it. People can sense it. And they usually don't like that person. <laughs> that's a, that's just a, one of the problems with people who are, tend to be arrogant. It's like, oh, I don't think we like that person. Yes. Um, and yeah. th- that brings us to something. You have a book. <laughs> which which you, have yeah. a, you have a book. So, it's on Amazon. There's, a, there's a, the Amazon version. Yes. Um, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the book? Sure. The book is Influence Through Voice. So that was the first book that uh, I wrote. Uh, in the book, people will find that the step-by-step guide to them to develop their authentically powerful voice. And uh, so not only developing the voice mechanism, but also uh, developing who they are developing more center in themselves so that they can be really powerful, not putting any facade. Yeah. And then you have an audiobook series. Uh, okay. So the audiobook is uh, The Influence Through Voice. Uh, based on that book, it's just the audio version that read by okay. me. Uh, <clears throat> yes. And that one, that one they have to buy on your website, correct? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a really good book. Um, definitely recommend it to people. And and one of the, actually, you know what, we'll we'll put up an ad for you on, on the show too. So next week we will have an ad just so you, people can go and find the book. It's a really good book. Um, and it has a lot of interesting things. When I first heard you, like I said, I, we met, we found you by accident and I, I'm so glad we found you. Um, you reminded me very much of some martial arts teachers I knew. You know, the, <laughs> I, and it's funny because at first I thought, hmm, I wonder if she does martial arts too. She, I figured you maybe do Tai Chi Chuan or something else. And because a lot of what you're saying fits the same philosophy, fits the same yes, yes. use of your mind, your body, your voice, everything. Um, <clears throat> I remember, yes. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. When I was in my teens and I was, I was helping to teach in a... In a uh, a Northern Shaolin Kung Fu, Kung Fu class, um, you know, the teacher goes, okay, count. And I was like, one, two, three. And he's like, what are you doing? Counting? <laughs> and he goes, <"Yeah." laughs> so, so I learned how to count and how to give it energy and force. And, 
and without tiring yourself because that becomes part of the motor center if you know so we a lot of times didn't count numbers we counted n- hup, 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 and you just did that over and the and the class moves to the moves and it makes it very easy to get and and you're never tired you could do that for hours and hours and your throat doesn't get tired because it's coming from here and here and and it's just mm. fascinating because again that makes your voice stronger just by coincidence, it, it helps without you even thinking about it. Um, but no, when I was watching yes, a lot yes. of your videos and the way you talk philosophically about the voice, your cavities, where your energy comes from, how your energy, I, I, I just loved it. I go, that's very much like a good martial arts teacher. So congratulations. You are, <laughs> you're, you're Thank you. Chef. Now, you're now I understand. Thank you. So yeah. now I understand why some comments on my YouTube channels, they were saying, this is like the female version of Bruce Lee. <laughs> oh, that's funny. In, in a way, so in a way. I always wondered what, what, what they meant. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. In, in a way, that's true because of the approach you're taking and your background, the general rounding you have, it comes out very much like that. Uh, because you do talk about your energy, the way the energy flows in your body, the way your air through the diaphragm and you bring it up and how you can bring your voice from up here to down there to down here and up here and that's that's fascinating and a lot of people get nervous with that they don't understand it they go what is that what, what are we doing and it's no mystery in fact yeah. if it, it's too, it's too bad they don't teach that in school people would be a lot further along if they did but they don't um yeah so so the books are good you also do now you haven't done a lot of i think in-person training you said from covid time you do a lot of groups too yes so i uh, mostly have turned online uh okay. for since the pandemic yep. and i enjoyed it because uh, even before the pandemic i had already started online training since uh 2013. Ah, so it wasn't okay. a big shift for me yeah yeah yep, that's good and you also have a beautiful singing voice <laughs> Thank you. You have a lot of nice so I, ideas. I, I was trained, yes, I was trained uh, in singing when I was in schools. Ah. And uh, later on in my college, I uh, fall in love with jazz. So I'm kind of self-taught in jazz. <laughs> okay. You have a nice jazz yeah. voice. And some, of the, some, of the one, uh, some of the samples you have are really, really just good samples of voice. And, and your voice is very sultry. It's got, uh, what, should I, what should I say, texture. It's got a very nice texture uh, when you, you sing. And for people who thank don't you. understand, you, you can also go quite high with your voice. Because a lot of people would say, <laughs> you have a yes. low voice and your voice is always low. But you can control your voice yeah. very well. You do a beautiful job of bringing that voice as high as you want. You, um, you go pretty high high uh, soprano on your voice. Yeah. So um, that is one of my side dreams, which is to be able to sing in some um, some pubs, some bars. Yeah, so that's my non-professional oh, you, you could, dream. You could do it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think you'd have any problem doing it now. You have a, you have a great voice. Because at first no, I was watching some of the videos. Now the bars are closed was, right oh, no, now. You'd yeah. be great. Because I, I remember <laughs> going through the videos, all of a sudden I, I wasn't paying attention when I hit next, and I heard a voice. I go, and I looked, I went, oh, it is you. <laughs> and I go, that's excellent, because it was the voice you were doing a higher pitch, and I went, Oh, that's really good, and and it was very enjoyable because yeah. it was because because I wasn't watching, I was listening more. When I looked, I went, "Oh, that's interesting," because your voice is usually lower when you talk, and all of a sudden, yes, you flipped it. You go, you can go very high, very good control. That's nice. It's interesting that Thank they closed you. the bars over there because here they they barely close them. Yeah, people get very unhappy if they can't get drunk here. <laughs> this is the U.S. <laughs> yeah. in, in the yeah. U.S., people drink a lot. Yes, so. And uh, <laughs> this is uh, related to something we were talking about a, a little bit earlier, but uh, the um, teaching people confidence part, how do you do that? I, I found that kind of an interesting comment that it's not just teaching people their voice, but in general, teaching them to be confident. How do you approach that with your clients? Yes. So there are uh, two areas that we touch on. One is, of course, the voice, the physical voice. So when we develop the physical voice, uh, body and mind, they are one. A voice is the body part. So when we develop the body, the voice, it will change the mind. 
So that's one way that we develop the confidence for the clients. And then the other one is, of course, that uh, I would point out some of my clients' mental blocks. Because you see the mental blocks, when you're not aware, you're being run by those mental blocks. But once we shed some light on it, they are more aware and it will be much easier to uh, become more confident as well. So that's uh, the two ways that we, we uh, help them. Interesting. So it's you got your work cut out for you. It, it's part part voice, part almost almost a therapeutic, yeah, like a therapy sort of thing for for some of the people, right? Yes. Interesting. Yes, that's right. And uh, so I think for that reason, I felt that I was chosen to do this work because I had to go through my own struggles, my own um, challenges, so that I could understand so deeply about those challenges that people are going through right now. Yeah, that's yeah, very so good. So you're really teaching from your own experience and sharing that with people. Interesting. Yes. Now, how did you get yes. into the, well, for those who don't know, what part of what you do is you also use the Enneagram, which is a, an, it's an ancient symbol. It's been around a long time. And you use the Enneagram to identify, I think, voice types and other characteristics. How did you get yes. into studying the Enneagram and applying it to voice? Mm -hmm. So I studied Enneagram back in 2008. And then ever since then, I had never stopped studying even more about Enneagram. Mm. Enneagram is something that the more you, you study about it, the more you find there's more to, need to study. And uh, Enneagram is uh, ancient wisdom and is a complete also a holistic way of understanding ourselves and others. And when I was learning about Enneagram and I realized, wow, each because Enneagram comes from a place where it studies what drives your behaviors. So when we study what's behind your behaviors, what drives your behaviors, then it's very much linked to voice because voice is something coming from deep within. So we mentioned that we can hear many things uh, from a person's voice. And because I was passionate about two areas and there was a natural uh, marriage between these two. Mm -hmm. And the more I coach my clients, the more I realize, oh, some of them, they are having the same type and they always come to me with the same voice problems. They also share the same voice patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started to pay more attention and pay more attention to not only the voice patterns, the types, but also uh, the solutions for every type uh, and from the voice point of view. And uh, so gradually I developed a system on that as well. And I have been sharing that uh, with different groups worldwide and uh, writing a book on that as well. Oh, are you already? Are, are you writing that right now? Yes. Oh, good. That yes. would be interesting. And the title of the book is, the title of the book is You Are Your Voice. <laughs> you Are Your Voice. I like that. That's good. And you'll yes. be talking about the Enneagram and how that applies and fits to it. That's very interesting. Yeah, yes. I learned the Enneagram a long time ago. This, I was in my 20s at the time. And it was through, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but it was uh, Georges Ivanovich Gurdjieff. He was a Russian philosopher uh, who yes. moved to the yes. West. And, and so I was, I was learning a lot of his techniques and stuff. And it was very fascinating. And they talked about the Enneagram and they even made allusions to if you understand the Enneagram and you're in the desert, it will help you get out. It was an interesting. Okay, uh, so it looks like it's. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting um, uh, approach to using the symbol to, to understand your situations, the situations, you, how you react to the situations and everything else. Then later in the US, that became very I think popular. We may have uh, oh, did lost, we lose? lost her for a second again. She's oh, just coming, coming back in. Okay. Let's see. And uh, so in the U.S., the Enneagram was used a lot in HR, human resources, to identify uh, characteristics of different people. Yes, yes. Yep. It so, can be used, yeah, in so many areas. So where did you learn originally the Enneagram? Did you just study on your own or you, you discovered it through other methods? Uh, so I was in, a, in another workshop and... Mm -hmm. uh, then they have a two days workshop on Enneagram. So I've learned with a teacher uh, locally in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I became more interested in Enneagram 
uh, instead of the original other training topics I was learning about. Yeah. So I went on to study more about Enneagram with many teachers, uh, including, for example, one of my favorite teachers, uh, Russ Hassan and uh, Helen Palmer and many other teachers about Enneagram. That name Helen Palmer sounds familiar. Did she write a book about it? Uh, yes. So yes. she yeah. is yeah. Uh, in California. She has yeah. just retired. Mm. Ah, okay, because I think, I think I saw or I have her book maybe because that, that name sounded very familiar. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a fun subject. It's a very fun subject. And again, anything that leads to more understanding about yourself is helpful. It, it's a good thing. Yes. How yes, did you? That's right. Yeah. How did you wind up in Singapore? Ah, uh, <laughs> so I was in Shanghai doing HR, uh, human resources, in mm -hmm. my uh, very first corporate job. So I thought I, because I was good with, I am still good with people. So I thought, okay, probably human resources is for me. And uh, I tried it and I realized that uh, there are many reasons that I wanted to uh, do something else. And I felt that I was uh, capable, capable of doing more than HR. And uh, then there was a job opportunity uh, came through my email. And uh, so I applied and uh, interviewed and got accepted. So that's where I came to Singapore. Interesting. How do you like when Singapore? I, I think one of the reasons, yes. Uh, I heard Singapore I, is very I, nice. I very like pretty. Singapore a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very, so I very like hot. Singapore a lot. Very because, hot though, right? Uh, uh, it, was, uh, it, it is a country that's uh, very friendly to, um, to, to people, to, mm -hmm. to especially foreigners. Because when you come from different parts of the world, a lot of people are coming from different parts of the world to s start their companies mm -hmm. or to work there. And Singapore, the Singapore government is also uh, very friendly to uh, okay. to to those things, because they want to attract foreign talents, even though there are some discussion on that for the past few years. Right. But still, <clears throat> that uh, they are they want to attract uh, talents from all over the world to uh, boost Singapore uh, and also boost Singapore's economy or do many different parts, yeah. innovation, technology. It's uh, something that the Singapore government is very uh, focused on. Oh, that's great. Now, they speak Mandarin in Singapore, correct? Yes. So there are three uh, official languages, mm -hmm. uh, Mandarin, English, and also Malay. Oh, Malay. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. Well, Harold. Harold is is Chinese from his, his great parents, I guess, grandparents? From well, my my dad's from uh, Indonesia. Oh, Indonesia. Yeah. It's, eh, I mean, you know, it's it's in the area. Indonesian is similar to Malay, but I don't actually speak it. I, <laughs> I never learned it, so <laughs> I pretty much just speak English. But yeah, I took Mandarin for I don't know four years, a long time ago. Oh, looks like <laughs> I don't we... remember that much. It's huh? been too too long. If you don't use it, you lose it. But, yeah, sorry, uh, we, uh, it looks like uh, the connection froze up a bit there. But yeah, my uh, my dad's side of the family, they're from, uh, well, my dad is from uh, Indonesia, but, but uh, my dad's family uh, is Chinese. Um, yes. Yeah. Indonesian, I guess, is similar to Malay, but I, I don't actually speak Indonesian, so I, I, I just speak English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never really learned the other languages, though I probably should have. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, we've got some music. That means uh, I guess we're uh, just about out of time. Uh, it's been it's been fun talking with you and getting to meet you in person. Uh, uh, like I said, I've, I've seen many, many, many of your videos. I don't know if I've seen everyone, but I've seen a lot of them. And uh, for Thank all you. of you watching, uh, if you want to get some great vocal training and, and learn more about yourself at the same time, start with uh, Cynthia's videos. They're really informative. But I would probably recommend if, if you're looking to expand on your abilities to speak, your abilities to, to, to talk with confidence and, and assertiveness to a certain point, to, to be able to lead people better, then definitely do take her training. I think you will learn a ton of good information about yourself and also about, um, 
about your voice and and you. It, it's just a, a, a good thing. Well, Cynthia, again, we really appreciate you coming on. We hope you come on again. A- and do me a favor. When you get your book on Enneagram, come back on and let's talk about it. Yes, sure. Thank you so much. We'd, and we'd also, uh, thank you for your patience. Oh, Not no, sure we're sorry. We, uh, you know, usually the today. connections, yeah. usually uh-huh. we have... It's very far, and you never know how many routers we go through. And and today might be a busy day somewhere, and that's why we're because we're normally we don't have a problem, and we have people in Australia that always come in. Not too much of a problem. Yeah. You know, we're having some connection issues today. It, it could. We're also very hot here today. That could be part of the problem. You never know. Yes. So yeah. anyway, really Thank appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you coming on and and all the great work you do for people. It's really nice to see someone doing that level of of training and help so i think you're doing a great job thank you thank you thank you for having me oh you're welcome and we will see you soon and if you're watching the show all of cynthia's information is below in the show notes you can go to our website you can also see where the book is we've got links to all of those so please feel free to to check them out Again, Cynthia, have a great one. And for all you people watching, thank you much. Please subscribe. And any feedback, please leave it below. And again, we'll we'll show you how you can get a hold of Cynthia on LinkedIn. Take care. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.